Hello guys, Dudeman slash Lawrence Wayne here, and welcome to episode 2 of the Commando 32 tutorial series. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to install and use the Commando 32 SDK. So, first thing you're gonna need to do, like in the first episode, is you're gonna need to go to the form page and click the download button, but this time you're clicking this download button. And again, make sure you've got the one point the latest version at the time recording it's 1.1.1 there may be a later version when you're watching this just make sure you always have the latest version and the latest computer to go with it because otherwise it won't really work uh, this episode will assume you've done episode one or at least that you've gotten the computer working because obviously you're not going to be developing for a computer if the computer doesn't work for you so ep watch episode one first unless you've already got it set up in which case it's fine and also, if you've got Windows or you've got Linux with Wine, I highly recommend you go to Notepad++ and you download that. I already have that on my computer, but uh, it'll, it'll be very useful. So yeah, link to that in the description as well. Um, Alright, so once you've got this, we're going to do the same thing as we did last time. We're going to extract it with whatever extracting program you want to use. And you're going to see a lot more files this time. Um, we've got an SDK manual, which is much bigger than the previous one, as you can tell by the file size as well. We've got a UDL file, a changelog, some example programs. Uh, ignore this folder. This is actually for this thing, which basically gives you the instructions. These are... Don't worry about that yet. We're going to work on that in a tutorial episode much later. So, yeah, this is the main guy right over here. It's the little SDK program. This is basically what you're going to be using throughout your entire development of any program for the Commando 32. Because this allows you to upload any kind of program you want. So, um, let me explain the modes. First, you click here, choose a file. I'm just going to choose an example program for now. And uh, you basically say what file type it is. If it's machine code, uh, by the way, the example programs included with the computer download are in machine code, if you want to know what that is. Assembly, don't need to worry about that yet. And high level, which is what this is. All the example programs are high level, at the moment anyway. And uh, then you choose what to do with that file. You can verify it, which makes sure that there are no errors. As you can see, this example program has no errors at all. No errors you can see over here. Uh, gives you some other information like how much program space you're using, how long it took, if you want to know that. So you want to make sure this number never hits 100% because then your program won't fit in the computer. Upload, which does the same thing as the block loader program included in the down the world download, except it's much fancier because you got a little progress bar. So you may prefer to use this one. Also, it actually whenever you oops. You can actually use Minecraft and have this thing open at the same time. It'll actually stay on top, so you can have this in the little bottom right corner and have it, the progress bar upload something. I'll show you what that looks like later. Um, you've got generate assembly code, generate machine code, don't worry about those yet. Basically, if you want to create your file in a format that can be used by the block loader, you'll want to select gen machine code, click go, and you'll get to save your program as something. I'm not going to do it, but yeah, that's what you need to do. And finally, we have commands to clipboard. What this basically does is when you run this, it'll copy the instructions to your copy paste thing. So you can go right click, pa you can't paste here because it's not a file, but you can paste it in like a text document or something if you want. But basically, the point of this is if you've got a Minecraft server, you can paste this into the terminal window and then it will upload the program instantly without any errors and it will be very fast so this is actually something that someone suggested to me so it's actually a really cool feature and I'd recommend it if you know how to set up a Minecraft server but we won't need to worry about that we're just going to use these two for pretty much everything in the tutorial these lost ones maybe I'll show some episodes on what they're for but yes um let's see okay to configure notepad plus plus so you've got Notepad++ now, we're going to open that, um, 
I'll just minimize this for now. And basically what you want to do, the really cool thing about Notepad++ is you can define your language, which means it'll look much more interesting than that dull black and white color scheme. So what you want to basically do is click Import, and um, let me just copy the file path over here. And you open this UDL for Notepad++ file. And I'll say Import Successful, and then you select it over here. And I can't click the done button because it doesn't fit on my screen. So I'll just have to dock it first and move this function list, it's useless. And then I'll scroll the button. Oh, never mind, it's not even there. Okay, I'll just close the window then. Anyway, then you go, oh right, you can't select it yet. What you basically need to do, this is a stupid thing with Notepad++, you need to close it, and then you need to open it again. And then you can select this. And now what this basically does is it makes things nice and colorful. You'll see what it looks like. Hold on, I'll give you an example. So, if I open, say, the paint program's code, see this boring black and white color scheme that no one wants to look at. For some reason, I put in a rain here. Oops. This was a test function. <laughs> anyway, you do that, and it's all colorful stuff. Ignore this. This I should actually fix that now. But, uh, yeah. That's how you set up the system. So uh, that's how you set up everything for the SDK. You can read the manual if you want with whatever PDF reader thing you have. Chrome will work as well. You just drag and drop it in Chrome, I believe. And it basically goes over everything, how the language works, all the functions. It's pretty long. It's 18 pages at the moment, but you don't need to read all of it. You can just watch the tutorial series instead. Um, I'll just cover everything in the manual or pretty much everything. I'll still be referring to the manual. Uh, for the final thing, I'm going to do upload a little program. Perhaps not this one. Maybe... I don't know. This one. This one's pretty small. To show you what it looks like, it's pretty much the same process, except you click go this time. Click go, select the window, and don't do anything. And it will just upload. And you got a little nice, nice little progress bar telling you how much still has to go. And as with the other one, if you have a slow computer or you're running Windows 8, you're going to want to upload that multiple times. But you won't need to upload it multiple times if you use this feature and you have a Minecraft server. So that's pretty cool. But I'm not going to do that because that's pretty overcomplicated. For this tutorial series, I'm pretty sure you can work it out if you want to. And um, that's it for this episode. In episode 3, We'll be, I'll be showing you how to create your first program for the Commodore 32. It'll be a pretty simple program, but uh, it'll be fun. And you'll get to run it on this thing, and uh, it'll do cool stuff. And by cool stuff, I mean something very boring, because it's your first program. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, bye.